hi guys welcome to brains on the beat here on youtube so today's video is going to be vibes cartel Glena recently published a very interesting article that i wanted my audience to hear and i wanted to give my thoughts and opinions on later on in this video but we're gonna get into this article and i'm gonna read all of it and then i'm gonna give my thoughts and opinions so let's get into it Two of the jurors who handed down the guilty verdict in the Vibes Cartel murder trial in 2014 are claiming that their lives have been transformed into nightmares since then. The two are now living overseas and say it has been difficult trying to make a new life in a far country away from their families. They are among three of the 11 jurors who relocated overseas after cartel whose correct name is Adija Palmer and his prodigy, prodigy Sean Storm or Sh Sean Campbell were convicted along with Kahir Jones and Andre St. John for the killing of Clive Lizard Williams in August 2011. They also gave evidence in the corruption trial of 50-year-old football coach Livingston Chain a fellow juror accused of offering them 500000 to return a verdict of not guilty against the entertainer. Chen's corruption trial is still ongoing before the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court, while the Court of Appeal is still deliberating on the legal challenge filed by cartel and the other men against their murder conviction. But the two jurors last week expressed fear that they will never set foot in Jamaica again. Why is it taking so long? Why are you going to draw out the trial of the of the man? One of the jurors told the Sunday Gleaner during the telephone interview last week in reference to the chain in reference to chain she relocated overseas under Jamaica's Witness Protection Program and charged that the local justice system is in need of urgent overhaul. The Witness Protection Program is designed for criminals who turn over evidence to the police. It's not designed for law-abiding citizens who build a life in Jamaica, said the former business owner. She said now struggling to find and maintain a job in her predominantly Caucasian neighborhood. She didn't have good problems, man. She lived in a predominantly Caucasian neighborhood. But that's neither here nor there. Let's continue. If you are a criminal in Jamaica and nothing is going on in your life and you decide to turn over evidence and go on the witness protection program, you may enjoy it because you can start over. But for a person like me who is an extrovert, family oriented and love having friends around, the answer is no, she added. All of my personal information has been changed, which simply means I have no past, I have no identity, I am a citizen of nowhere. That hurts, she declared. According to the former juror, she has even contemplated suicide as a means of escaping her situation. She said she is prohibited from speaking to relatives outside of the eight days per year they allow to visit her at a location away from where she lives. The juror said her identity has been changed and she has been barren from contacting anyone in Jamaica and from speaking to any Jamaican she may come across where she is located. Her social media accounts are also monitored. And while the Jamaican government give her a stipend and pay for her living quarters, she must work to take care of her other needs. But because she's not a citizen of the country that she now lives in, she has to work menial jobs. Some people over here would have glad for the liquor menial jobs and the stipend to play for pay if I wish part them live. But that's neither here nor there either. Let's keep it pushing. I spent Christmas by myself. I spent New Year's day by myself and what angers me even more is that the person the juror who is the main source of the whole thing was able to spend his holidays out on bail with his families and it is as if in prison for 
I'm in prison for taking an oath to serve my country, she said. The second juror is not a part of the witness protection program, but applied for and was granted special migration privileges by the country where he now resides. After he outlined his ties to the Vibes cartel trial and his safety concerns. But he left a wife and children in Jamaica and he has not seen them in person in more than three years. He fears that he will never be able to visit Jamaica again. I really thought that this process would have been completely completed already. But since I moved, it has been a battle in court and nothing is really happening, he argued. I fret every single day for my family because up to this point they are still there. My son is getting older and he's asking where his daddy is every day and we can only video chat. I can't even mention the sleepless nights, all the hurt and the pain, said the juror. For the two, returning to, to Jamaica would be their ultimate pleasure. So when I saw this article this morning my ears started ringing and my brain cells started tingling um some of the things that stood out to me in this article about these two jurors that relocated and got me thinking is why did they run overseas is it because they did something that they weren't supposed to do and their conscience is killing them or is it because they were bribed and paid to give a guilty verdict in a trial and say some other stuff saying that chain bribed them to send back a not guilty verdict and know that the great life that these people that bribed them told them that they were going to get overseas is not panning out the way they thought it would so now they're crying out and all the other jurors there there were 11 jurors two of which relocated what happened to the other nine jurors they're not i haven't heard any complaints about them i i don't think they're in fear for their lives um their life have not been threatened their family lives have not been threatened so what's so special about these two jurors that relocated overseas they did not testify against vibes cartel they did not do anything wrong me looking from the outside in and they're not Clive Lizard Williams family member so I don't see where them fearing for their lives come in if they're such good abiding citizens of Jamaica you being a juror and you testifying against Chain because you allege that he tried to bribe you in giving Vibes Cartel a not guilty verdict then you should be good the law is on your side you're well protected everything that has transpired has been well documented what is it you're running from and why the other nine jurors are not running and and still residing in jamaica but the conspiracy theorist in me just keep my brain just kept on tingling and something that came to mind was it's either they're plotting to make vibes cartel look bad because the vibes cartel appeal is still going on and the judges are still in deliberations and they're either trying to manipulate the media so he can look bad in the media or they're trying to manipulate these judges to deny vibes cartels appeal because these people were jurors in a murder trial from 2014 it's now 2018 
why didn't you speak out from 2014 when they relocated you overseas about you fearing for your life and your family's life and your well-being and how you can find a job and maintain a job why didn't you say something back then you're saying it four years later when this man is at the brink of getting his freedom back and at basically he has the possibility of becoming a free man like why is it just now you're so concerned about your well-being why weren't you more concerned four years ago i'm gonna play devil advocate at this point and i'm gonna say okay you're fearful for your life because you testified against chain and everything and you were a juror in vibes cartel's case and all of that and you're completely terrified why haven't vibes cartel done something to the other nine jurors that is residing in jamaica why do you think they're gonna come for you too because you're overseas with whole new identities and whole new life don't you think that vibes if vibes cartel was going to do something to these jurors or do something to one of these jurors don't you think that he would do something to the ones that are in jamaica that are more accessible to him and so this whole thing does not make any sense and why this these two are just speaking out doesn't make any sense to me either but that's neither here nor there i want my audience members to comment in the comment section and tell me what you guys think about everything that i've said in this video from them conscience hurting them or them being bribed and paid and promised luxurious lifestyle overseas and it's not panning out the way that they think it would have so now they're crying out because they want back their life in jamaica or do you think that these people are just plotting to make vibes cartel look bad while these judges are in deliberation so they can deny them their appeal comment in the comment section and tell me what you guys think about this story this story came out at a very convenient time so and that's all i'm going to say comment in the comment section and tell me what you guys think don't forget to like comment share and subscribe to your girl here on youtube i'm a part of here man deuces